with the release of Sword and Shield on the 15th of November, I've jumped onto my sketch pad, put together three new designs for you to represent your Team Starter, Team Skull Bunny, Rookie Gang, or Team Sobel. Hop over to the Teespring store now. You can grab a 10% discount with the discount code STARTER. Hi friends and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and in today's episode we're going to be continuing on with this team that we started at the beginning of this week, which is revolving around Rayquaza and Groudon. Now, you might have seen a little bit of a promo video at the start of this episode, and this is in the run-up to Sword and Shield. I've put together three brand new designs to represent those sort of teams that you would like to get behind. Are you Team Skull Bunny, Team Sobel, or are you part of that Grookey gang? If you'd like to grab one of these t-shirts and represent which team or gang you're part of, then you can hop over to our Teespring store. The link is down in the description below, and at the moment we have a 10% discount promotion running on these tees and everything else in the store for 10% on everything that we have. So if you want to go over there and grab a tee, make sure you use the promotion code STARTER and then you'll get that 10% discount. But the tees look super nice. I've got mine on the way, so as soon as they do arrive, I will be representing them come uh, the next few weeks I hope it doesn't take that long it should only take a few days so next week on the channel hopefully I've got my team representing here and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna reveal because I did initially have a team to start with but I've I've changed so I'm gonna keep it a secret I'll just wear the tea when it arrives and then you will know but if you'd like to leave me a comment down in the description below let me know which team or gang you are on it makes it confusing because you got the Grookey gang or your team Grookey I don't know Grookey gang just sounded better so we put that down in the description I'm sure the Grookey Gang people will appreciate that. But let me know which team you're on or which starter you'll be likely to pick going into Sword and Shield. Or if you haven't even decided yet because you just love them all. Right, with that out the way, let's get into today's battle video. We had some good games this week so far. I'm looking forward to playing a little bit more with the team. It is very solid. Got some nice options there. We've not been super consistent. We're 2-2 two and two at the minute. Um, but I feel like we can get back on the road to victory today. So, as always. If you do enjoy this sort of content, please remember to drop a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel. And uh, as always, leave your comments down below. I love hearing your thoughts on the team in general, what your ideas would be if you were to take this forward, what you like about it, what you dislike about it, what you don't like about the battles. And of course, what you'd like to see in Sword and Shield when that does drop, because it is very soon that that game will be dropping and uh, I will be doing lots of content. I've already got a whole schedule planned for content. I'll be doing a playthrough on Twitch. I'll be doing loads of guides. I'll be doing a battle series as well. But if there's anything else you would like to see me cover when Sword and Shield does come out, do let me know and I will make sure to do my best to try and cover that for you guys. So I'm just going to look for our first opponent today. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. It's going to take ages, isn't it? Because the battle spot at the minute is dead. It's dead. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not money joking. It's the time of day that I'm recording these, I think, but uh, the battle spot is not as uh, rife as it used to be. What we'll do is cut the video right now, my friends. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with our first opponent. Nemo, what are you doing? Nemo, you're ruining it. You're ruining the cut. Okay, well, we've got another Eveltal. Let's hop over to uh, Team Preview. Okay, so our first opponent today, Captain Nemo, is running a team of Iveltal, Lunala, Tapu, Lele, Togedemaru, Amoongus, and Moal. So Moal is one of those Pokemon, interesting Pokemon. It is going to be the mega of the team that you're seeing commonly paired up with Lunala because it offers a Trick Room support that really helps and benefits the Moal. You've got Amoongus support there as well to help with the Trick Room in case anything does happen and you want the redirection. Redirection is also really nice for Iveltal and Lunala and particular because they are prone and really weak to single target attacks not so much uh, the, the the spread attacks that we'll see um okay so we're probably gonna see a maybe a trick room well definitely a trick room mod but maybe a tailwind mod with that eveltal as well um okay i think i think i think coco is good here especially with the varium because it can it can nab the eveltal um, and doesn't need to worry too much about the Togodomaru. Um, I think what we'll do is bring 
Coco will bring Suicune. Uh, I definitely need Groudon here. And maybe I don't want Ray. Maybe Incineroar is just the better choice, I think. So we're benching Ray for this one. I think it makes more sense for the team. A uh, couple of Dark types. And I'm including Suicune there because of Snarl. Which doesn't make any sense, but it does kind of make sense because Suicune's just bulky and the Snarl can do a lot of work too. The majority of things on my opponent's team, we need to be a bit careful around the Toga tomorrow, depending on what that's carrying. But other than that, I think we should be alright. It's an interesting call that we're playing though. I've not seen, I don't think, a team revolving around Eveltal and Lunala. So it's, it's a nice build for us to uh, kick off with today and an interesting one. We're going to see uh, Toga tomorrow and Lunala come out for my opponent. The one issue here, of course, is going to be that we're, we're throwing up the electric terrain and boosting the Togunamaru's ability to attack. Um, now, where do you snarl? Uh, do we snarl or where do they fake out? We could pull a double switch, you know. Um, I'm kind of tempted to pull a double switch. Let's go for Incineroar and let's go for Groudon. Um, the only issue is, where do you target if you're Lunala? I'm hoping it's not into this Suicune slot. And I'm, I'm thinking more along the lines of, well, my opponent's got Togemora, the electric train's up. We can do a lot of damage to the Suicune with an electric type attack, so we can concentrate more of our efforts with Lunala down on that type of Coco, or just go for some speed control, which would be hella better for us. It honestly would. Um, so we'll get Groudon in, and we will get Iron Cinema onto the field. The only problem with this team that I don't like, and I don't really like running, no bulk Groudon. You know, this Groudon's very fast, very offensive, but it's not got the bulk, and uh, it will go down to big attacks like the Z-Move from Lunala, so we need to be a little bit careful around that. We're going to see a fake out. It is going to be into uh, Groudon and the Moonguys Beam. Please be into Incineroar. Please. Come on, come on. Yay. <laughs> Incineroar, you're the best cat. Um, All right. So we can go for Togemaru with a Flare Blitz. Uh, we could potentially fake it out. Um, we could knock off the Lunala as well. Um, I think this Lunala is slow. That's my only thing, but it's, it's a little bit risky going for an eruption. And um, I feel like the Togemaru is so threatened here. We could potentially just go for a knock off into the Lunala. Preserve Groudon, it's so important for us, and then switch it back into Suicune. I really don't want to lose a Groudon <clears throat> early on. So Ivelto coming back in, and that's fine. Especially because we will get our, um, our Suicune onto the field. It would have been nice maybe to go for a, um, an eruption there, but at the same time, if we do see a Z move come up from the Lunala, then we know we've made probably the better choice. And it is! Okay. Wow. Not the Z move I expected. No, it's the Phytinium Z. What? <laughs> this is like, this is so like Sun Series. Come on. Right, well, this is going to be in C gone, I think. Maybe we, I, I don't know. Can we take it? Not from now. Nah, we've taken Chip, so that's, that's that. That's <sighs> disappointing. That's disappointing. That is disappointing. Mm. Well, I mean, we can get Coco back onto the field. We can pressure the Eveltal. And maybe if my opponent decides to switch in the Togodomaru to protect the Eveltal, then we can pick up a, a cheeky knockout there, potentially. Um, we'll, we'll go for the Z-move. We'll just unlock that right now. Um, and I think setting up a Tailwind... Is this the worst time to do this? Because is the Lunala gonna trick room? I don't know. We'll set up a we'll set up a tailwind. We'll go for it. We need to try and get our ground on in a, in a nice spot when it comes back onto the field. So tailwinding seems like it could do the job. Okay, we're not gonna see the Eveltal um, protect or any switches. Um, so we should be able to remove the Eveltal from the field. Unless it is a salt vest, then it will probably take this. Okay, let's see. Come on. Okay, 
Evelton gone. That's good. Then we could have snarled here, but I think... Okay, Moon Guy's beam. That's fine. Like, if Coco goes down here, which I don't mind if it does, honestly. We're in a really nice position this next turn. Coco. Coco, why'd you survive? Come on. If you ever want to crit here. I mean, having Coco's still a nice option. For sure. Uh, we've got the Snarl we can go for this next turn. Uh, but that Lunala's 100%. Got, uh, got Trick Room, 100%. Um, do we just break Shadow Shield and potential Focus Sash with a Dazzle and go for a Snarl as well? I think it's not a bad idea. Hopefully the Togo tomorrow just doesn't attack. It goes Fake Out into Suicune. Okay, well that's still fine. We'll probably see a Trick Room set up now, I would imagine. Um, Dazzle doing some decent work. And what's this? Eject button. Don't be the blinking mobile. Don't be the mobile. It's gonna be the mobile, isn't it? Oh, it's a tapu lele. Okay. Well, I really don't mind this. That's way better than mobile. Hmm. All right. There's a trick room. Okay. Well, that doesn't help us too much, really. Um. <sighs> All right. What are we gonna do? Um, I mean, at this point, other than the psychic terrain being active on the field, Coco's kind of redundant. And there's a Lele scarfed. That would be a question. I don't know if it will be, to be honest. Is the Lele scarfed? We can't protect Suicune. Uh, we can protect Coco for a turn, I guess. Um, and we'll snarl as well. We just need Suicune to hang on like this turn would be good. We just don't want to double up into Suicune. We want to see an attack into Coco. Psychic. Okay. Yeah, just proc our berry. It's Life Orb. Oh, okay. This team's nasty, man. This is a really nasty team. Lunala Psyshock. Doubling into Suicune. Could have got away with this. The Vault Switch. Okay, so Suicune's going to go down the next turn. We do get a Snarl, which does help. Um, but it's not really helping our situation right now. Can Groudon win this out by itself? Um, well, we'll try with a Dazzle. And I can't protect Suicune. But a Tailwind does end the next turn. So we can, we can try a Snarl. That's not looking too good. Dazzling Gleam coming out. Okay. Hmm. At least that Tailwind ends now, which is good. Uh, and if that is a fast Lele, which you would imagine it will be with the Life Orb, then Groudon will be the slowest thing on the field. So we can launch an Eruption, which should be enough to take down both targets. The only issue would be here is if we see a wide guard from the Lunala. But if we don't, and we can nab both a K like a KO on both Pokemon now, we'll click the eruption button and see. Then Togedomaru is easy for us to deal with. Come on, Groudon, let's play this trick room like you've never played a trick room ever before. It has to be timid Lele, though, I think. Yeah. No! <laughs> We're so screwed, Wisco. This is the worst. Gonna have the most powerful eruption now, and uh, yeah, the Lunala, okay. We're kind of banking at that point. Like, we knew early on how risky the, the, the Tailwind would be, especially with the Lunala, and not having a way to properly deal with it. <sighs> well, good game to my opponent. Um, the Lunala just <sighs> caused too much of a problem for us in the end. Um, and maybe that's something we could have managed a little bit better with Suicune going for maybe Snarls early on um, and not bringing the Coco and going down another route with having to, like trying to deal with Yveltal rather than relying on Coco so much but then Coco would have been good maybe in the back to bring in later when that Psychic Train potentially does come out um, but never mind not the best of starts for us today but we will continue on we'll lock in with some more Mulezok and uh, we will try and redeem ourselves in this next one. Um, 
And now my opponent's played that team. We're like, we've played that Iveltal and Lunala core. I'm like, hmm, could we actually try that out ourselves and make that work? Like, I love Iveltal and I do like Lunala. That combination is something I've never really thought to put together before, but it did work quite well against, well, at least what we were playing anyway. Um, we could have maybe done a little better. I think we definitely could have. But anyway, we've got a next opponent. We'll forget about that last one. We don't want to tilt and we'll get into team preview. Okay, so our next opponent is running a team of Duskman, Krosma, Rikwaza, Incineroar, Tapu Lele, Crobat, and Celesteela. So, hmm. Okay. Groudon's going to be really nice here, to be honest. If we can get ourselves into um, a Tailwind or a Trick Room scenario, then I think Groudon does a lot of work. Uh, it might be better going off and going down a, a Trick Room route, to be honest, because, um, well... Are we? My opponent doesn't really have... Well, they do. They've got speed control with the Crobat. That's the the big problem there, isn't it? Um, we need a way to get rid of the Crobat early on. So we could potentially... I think Coco is very good here because Ultra Necrozma and Rayquaza, the Ferium deals with those super well. It deals with Crobat, Celestia really well. Um, so my opponent's going to be like hard pushed. Like Coco puts on a lot of pressure on my opponent's side of the field. I think Incineroar as well because of the Intimidate support, the extra fire typing. I definitely want Groudon in this match for sure. And um, what's our last one going to be? Do we want Suicune to match Tailwinds or do we want uh, Stack Attacker? I think Suicune, even though Ray is tempting as well, but the speed control will be useful. And I think... We need to redeem these four, don't we, from that first match. The Lunala with its Phytinium Z. Out of nowhere. Totally. Like, if we had and could utilize Incineroar for the rest of that match, it would have made things a lot easier because then we have a little bit more room to uh, utilize our fake out support to get around certain threats to stall out the Trick Room and the Tailwind turns, etc. But um, unfortunately, wasn't the case. Okay, so uh, we're going to see Duskmane and Crowback come out for my opponent. Now, do we just Volt Switch out on the Crobat? We could Volt Switch and Fake it out. Do Crobats ever carry Protect? I really don't think so. I'm going to Fake it out, just to break a potential Sash, even though we're not going to be able to stop it attacking. Um, Crobats generally have Sash, so uh, we are going to see the Crobat might actually go for that Ultra Burst very early on in this match. If the Crobat's got Protect, then with totally screwed we went all in there the crowds are going to protect that's fine they're going to try and get a, t a, a tailwind up um we'll fake out obviously you're not able to flinch it but this is the thing like if it's sashed and we win the speed tie which we have we can take it down we can get rid of that threat which is pretty huge for us um okay so we can now bring in uh suicune i think is the better option because maybe ray is likely to come out onto the field and uh, my opponent's lost their speed control, so we can potentially utilize our speed control and close this one out. It's not going to be straightforward at all, but uh, if we can get our tailwind up, it makes things it makes our life a lot easier. Okay, we do need to worry about a potential Z move from the Ultra Necrozma and a Lele switch in, um, which could come on to Suicune. Like, honestly, um, the one thing we could potentially do to get around this would be to Tailwind and switch into Coco. But if I do that and we lose Coco, we lose a really good means to get rid of the Rayquaza and the Crossman. And I'm not massively comfortable with doing that. The risk is if my opponent does switch the Ray into the Lele and Z moves Suicune, we lose Suicune and we don't get a Tailwind up. But I don't think. I think we're still in an all right position to go from there. Okay, so we're not going to see the Lele come in, which is good. I'm going to see the Ray Mega Evolve. So I've just knocked off the um, Necrozma as well, just to get some damage onto it. And we are going to see the Z move. Now, without the terrain, I don't think this picks up the knockout onto Suicune. We have to cut this as well, so we'll be right back when it does connect. 
Okay, into the Suicune it is, and let's see how much damage it does. Wow, okay, Suicune taking that like a champ. That is one of the strongest Z moves in the game. Proccing that Wiki Berry, getting some nice health back. And a Dragon Ascent following up from the Rayquaza going <laughs> into the Suicune as well. We are not, uh, intim it's not intimidated, so nah, we're not going to be able to take that, unfortunately. Doubling up into the Suicune makes a lot of sense, but they've used two of the most powerful attacks in the game to actually get rid of Suicune. Um, and we do get the knockoff into the Necrozma. Uh, I'd imagine maybe the Ray is banded, potentially. That would be my best guess, I would say. Um, so we'll bring in Coco once again. The only risk is whenever we've got Coco out on the field, taking an Earth power, but I'm just gonna lock in to the Twinkle Tackle. And I'm going to go for a U-turn out onto the Necrozma. Oh, the Ray is switching out. It is banded, I would imagine. We're probably going to lose Coco now. <sighs> okay. And I just... Groudon's not going to be able to deal with the, the Rayquaza by itself. Unless we see the Necrozma protect here. Whew. Okay. Well, that's a little bit of a let-off. It really is, honestly. Um... We'll get the Z-move, it's not going to be as effective, it's going to be into the Incineroar um, and not do as much damage as we wanted. But I think the switch there indicates that the Ray is definitely banded, 100%. Um, the switch to Incineroar is nice for my opponent because it gives them the fake out support the next turn to uh, fake out the, the Tapu Koko. Uh, we might have been better going for a U-turn honestly into Incineroar here because if once we have Groudon out on the field then we've got the double protect potential. Um, I think we need to protect Coco and uh, we'll go for a U-turn again into the Necrozma. And do we see a fake out and an earth power into Coco? Because I think if my opponent gets rid of the Coco, it makes things so much easier for them. They are going earth power there and they're going to um, they're going to U-turn out onto our Groudon and bring the Rayquaza onto the field. Okay. Well, I don't mind this at all because we can, to get around the ray, we can switch in our Incineroar and Dazzling Gleam. And the Dazzle will get rid of the Necrozma. I mean, the other option is what we've got, we could potentially uh, switch out Coco, protect Groudon, get Incineroar onto the field, but then. It's not really keeping momentum on our side of the field. That's the only problem. Like we want to be keeping Coco on the field. Uh, the only risk would be if we, we do the original play that we're talking about, where we switch Incineroar in for Groudon, um, protect Coco. Then uh, there's always the chance that the Necrozma might protect the Rayquaza. Might have something like Earthquake that it locks into and gets rid of Coco. Um, okay. I think we dazzle, and if it's banded, it's gonna have probably it's probably gonna have earthquake. Does my opponent have anything to earthquake? It's got the Celestial and the Crawback. It's definitely got earthquake. One hundred percent got earthquake. Um, we want to make this difficult for my opponent. I think, like, if we, I need to preserve Coco. I'm gonna switch in Incineroar. I'm gonna make that play. And I'm going to scout out what this Rayquaza is going to do. I'd imagine the Necrozma will protect this turn. But if, you, if the Ray doesn't lock into Earthquake, then it makes things a lot easier for us. Yeah, we're going to see Incineroar come onto the field. I'd probably to better take that Earthquake, to be honest. But that's all I'm expecting. Like, I totally expect Earthquake to come out. We might see waterfall or something like that. I don't know, but we will find out soon. We protect that Groudon and it is Earthquake, unfortunately. If it takes down its own Incineroar, that would be amazing. Go on, take out your own Incin. Yeah, you do. Okay. And ours is left. Okay, well that's that's better for us. Um, it's... 
only problem is how do we beat? Hmm. And I think you've got to protect Necrozma this turn. Hmm. Because we need, we just need to get damage onto the ray. But I feel like if my opponent's smart, they'll know if we fake out the ray, then the Cosma can get an attack off potentially into the Groudon. Um, but I'm gonna have to try and go for eruption. I need to get damage onto the ray, so yeah, we're gonna see that. Okay. Well, this plays off. So we just need to get damage onto the Rayquaza, so it's more likely Dazzling Gleam will be able to pick up a knockout, because we know that the Necrozma is definitely in Dazzling Gleam range from the Coco. Um, and single target, because we can now protect our Groudon and let Incineroar go down. Uh, we'll try go for a knockoff. That would be super useful if we can get that. We're not going to be able to, though. Uh, but the Necrozma probably goes down to an Earthquake from Ray. Uh, whoa, Necrozma actually getting a double protect. That is annoying. But what can you do? What can you do? Uh, an earthquake. I mean, Groudon probably takes. Um, an earthquake from Rayquaza, from this range anyway. I don't think the Necrozma will. So we could potentially protect Coco this next turn. Um, and go for another eruption. It's our only option uh, for hitting Rayquaza, unfortunately, and we're probably not going to do a massive amount of damage, but any damage at this point will make that single target doesn't gleam a lot, uh, have a bit of a better chance anyway to pick up the knockout there. So, um, right, let's do this. Let's lock in to protect with Coco and go for an eruption. Because the Necrozma will go down. Well, the Necrozma might get an attack off even. Um, if it attacks into Groudon, that's not ideal. Earth power. Yeah, it's gone into the Groudon. Okay. Alright. Ah, uh, yeah, we'd probably really be better going Dazzle and then Eruption then. Um, but hopefully the Necrozma goes down now. It, it will make Dazzling Gleam a single target attack. Attack. So. Ah, oh, it doesn't actually. Hmm. We really needed that to go down there. But I don't think Dazzling Gleam gets the ray now. And Coco. Can you take a minus one banded earthquake? I really don't think you can. <laughs> oh, we could double protect, but I'm not even gonna chance it. This game just went on. And across my double protected earlier. We're not gonna see my opponent go for a protect again. The ray does hang on. It's gonna be <sighs> Single target earthquake, we're not gonna be able to take. Banded, minus one, regardless. And Coco's going down. Yeah, and that's it. That's a bit unfortunate. <sighs> if we had, well, I say if we'd gone for the turn before where we went for the dazzle and the eruption, it wouldn't have mattered because then it would have just come down to Groudon versus Ray, which is probably worse. Uh, we needed the Necrozma to go down to the initial Earthquake. Um, oh, two losses today, not great. But two good teams we played against, two awkward teams. Um, and we'll wrap things up there, my friends. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. I hope at least it's been entertaining. Uh, we're learning a lot about the team as well, so some nice things to take on board for Thursday, Friday. And uh, we can discuss changes that we would make on Friday before we finish up with the team then. So we'll be back with more episodes games tomorrow uh, have a great day morning afternoon night whatever time of day it is wherever you are watching this and uh, i will see you all again for another one very soon so until then take care and bye bye